you might think it's just random jersey numbers, but there's hidden meanings behind why players chose them. Like DeAndre Hopkins, his jersey number isn't something he chose, the police did. And it all started when DeAndre grew up in South Carolina, in the projects. DeAndre easily could have slipped into this lifestyle, but his cousin wouldn't let him. He convinced DeAndre to use football as an escape. He saw DeAndre's potential and tried his hardest to be a role model. But making it out of the hood is easier said than done. And his cousin, he fell right into the trap and started selling drugs. How's this dude telling you not to get into the street life and then gets into the street life? <laughs> What? Yeah, I guess when you're making thousands, you become a dummy. So his name became hot in the streets. But one day, the police got an anonymous tip. They pulled up to his cousin's house, busted in his door, and found exactly what they were looking for. So they arrested him. And when the judge got a hold of his cousin, he was found guilty and forced to serve 10 years in jail. DeAndre was heartbroken, but he couldn't let this hold him back. So he grinded even harder and made it a goal to go pro for his cousin. And in 2013, he accomplished that goal, being drafted to the Texans. Fast forward to 2020, DeAndre was traded to the Cardinals. So people blew up his Twitter asking what number he'd choose. And he tweeted, my big cousin from South Carolina did 10 years in jail for $600 worth of drugs. Let that sink in. That's the real reason I wear number 10. Damn. Deshaun Watson may be in the NFL, but his jersey number was inspired by one of the most random NBA players ever, JJ Redick. Uh, huh? Well, growing up, Deshaun wanted to be exactly like him. So instead of football, he played basketball in high school and he tried to play exactly like him, being a three-point shooter. Deshaun also wore the number four, just like JJ Redick. Uh, this dude's really obsessed with JJ Redick. Like, uh, I'd get LeBron or Jordan, but JJ Redick? Huh? That's your idol? <laughs> what? What? Why? Well, Deshaun went on the Dan Patrick show to help us understand why. You idolized JJ Redick. I did. And I still do. Really? Yeah. Because? Oh, uh, me and my mom, we grew up Duke fans. My mom loved Coach K. She loved Duke, so that's what I was raised on. And at that time, when I was watching basketball and playing, uh, JJ Reddit was a guy. He had number four, which was my favorite number. He can shoot threes, which what I like to do. And I just fell in love. Have with you him. met JJ Reddit? I have not. Paulie, bring out JJ Reddick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were serious. If you could have played, <laughs> and even in football, Deshaun's represented for him. He wore the number four in college at Clemson and in the NFL with the Texans. All for JJ Reddick. But at least he didn't have to go through something horrifying to get his number, like Lamar Jackson. The reason Lamar chose his jersey number is heartbreaking. Growing up. His dad meant everything to him. He was the one who introduced Lamar to football. The two would practice in the front yard every single day and study the NFL every single night. But that was all put to a stop. On his way home from work, Lamar's father was in a car accident, killing him instantly. And if that wasn't bad enough, his grandmother passed away later that day as well. Just imagine losing two of the closest people to you on the same day. This was a lot for eight-year-old Lamar to handle. He was beyond hurt, so he used football to escape his reality. And by the time he got to high school, well, he became a star. And that's where he rocked the number seven for his idol, Michael Vick. And Lamar played exactly like him, putting up record-breaking numbers and every college wanted the piece. But, when Lamar got to the University of Louisville, things changed. See, Reggie Bonifon was already wearing number seven, so Lamar was forced to pick a new number. At first, he didn't know what to do, but after talking to his mom, they decided on the number eight to represent the tragedy that Lamar was faced with at eight years old, keeping his dad and grandma with him at all times. And that didn't change when Lamar was drafted to the NFL. Repping the number eight, that's why he turned into a superstar so quickly, because it's more than just him out there. He's got his family with him. Damn. 
That was a that was a tough story to get through. So we need to lighten the mood a little bit, all right? This next guy, he didn't get his number from a tragedy. He had to spend racks to get the number he wanted. Darrell Rivas has one of the most expensive jersey numbers ever. Back in 2007, when he was drafted to the Jets, he became one of the league's most feared cornerbacks. And he did all this while wearing the number 24. See, he repped 24 for Kobe Bryant and wanted to come out each game with the Mamba mentality. But when he was traded to the Buccaneers in 2013, there was a big problem. Mark Barron already had the number 24 and he wasn't planning on changing it. But Darrell, he wasn't going to take no for an answer. So the two went into fierce negotiations for the next few days. And Mark told Darrell that if he wanted 24, he'd have to pay him six digits. Damn, six figures for a jersey? Aw, oh, hell no, nah, this dude's tripping. Yeah, Darrell wasn't having it. So they went back and forth for a few more days, and the two finally agreed on a price. $50,000 for a jersey number. Jesus Christ, in 2013, this dude could have bought 250 Bitcoin for that. I hope that jersey was worth it. He could have had an extra 10 milli. But that's not all he could have had. He could have had hundreds of millions of dollars. If he dropped a like and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, that's right. We got the power to make you rich. Ooh, so what are you doing? Subscribe. But anyways, the jersey represents everything Darrell believed in. And that's why he's dead set on wearing it on every NFL team he joins. Some people like Darrell, you know, they're just inspired by other athletes. But Russell Wilson, he had his jersey number chosen by God himself. Growing up, Russell's father Harrison was his everything. He influenced Russell to become a spiritual and religious person. And together, they would pray and go to church every week. But Harrison also wanted to see Russell do huge things. Like, you know, make the MLB or the NFL. So they decided they'd do whatever it takes to make it happen. Now, Russell didn't enjoy baseball as much as he enjoyed football, but at the end of the day, he wanted to make his dad proud, and giving up the sport he was gifted at didn't sound smart. So for a while, he tried to balance both. They studied film, worked out together, and Russell got really good at the two sports. But at 16 years old, he was hit with a decision that would change the rest of his life. The Orioles, an MLB team, offered Russell a $350,000 contract in high school. This marked a turning point in Russell's life. He had to decide between a guaranteed career in the MLB or his true passion of football. With money on the line, he said no to $350,000 and decided to play it safe by continuing to play baseball, the sport he was more naturally gifted at, but keep working on his football skills because you know, that was his true passion. So from 2008 to 2010, Russell played football and baseball for NC State, but scouts were still more interested in him for the MLB than the NFL. And on June 8th, 2010, the Rockies drafted Russell Wilson with the 140th pick, officially making the MLB. But moments later, Russell got a phone call. He thought it would be his dad calling to congratulate him, but it was the hospital and his dad Harrison was in trouble. Russell's dad was being rushed to the ER after having a stroke. And on the phone, doctors let Russell know that his dad was in critical condition. So him, his mom and grandma raced to the hospital as fast as they could when they got there, doctors told them Harrison needed rest to have the best chance of recovering. That meant Russell couldn't visit his dad. So Russell and his family did the only thing they could do, pray. When all of a sudden, Russell felt something in the air telling him to go into his dad's room against the doctor's orders. And he remembers this moment perfectly, saying, I walked in. I could see the EKG monitor, and I said, hey, dad, I'm here. I knew my dad could hear everything. He was waiting for something great to happen, and I was telling him about how I got drafted. And as soon as I said that, the line went flat. That's how I knew the Lord is real. That's how I knew he went in peace and is here watching me right now. 
Russell made the MLB, and it was all for his dad. But after his dad passed away, things became clearer for Russell. He realized he was playing us safe with baseball. More than anything, he wanted to make his dad proud. And now that he did that, it was time to make Russell proud. So he put all of his focus into football and had a great playing career at the University of Wisconsin. And then it happened. He was drafted to the Seahawks in 2012. And when it came to the number Russell would choose, he thought back to that moment with his dad and he knew religion had to play a big part in his career. So Russell announced, I choose the number three to honor the Holy Trinity, keeping his dad with him every time he steps on the field. This was an easy choice for Russell, but some NFL players really struggle to pick a number. And Patrick Mahomes nearly cost himself millions of dollars because he couldn't make up his mind. It all started at the 2017 NFL Draft. Mahomes was selected with the 10th pick by the Chiefs and was expected to become their star quarterback. He wanted to rep the number five like he did in high school and college, but there was one gigantic problem. At the time, the Chiefs had a kicker named Cairo Santos and he was already rocking the number five. So people started asking Mahomes if he was gonna force his teammate to give up the number four. But you know, being the new guy, he didn't wanna rub anyone the wrong way. Even though the number five was important to him, he decided to go with the number 15 instead. And with that, jerseys started being made for the upcoming season. They started advertising the new star quarterback, and people were already putting in pre-orders. But then, Mahomes started thinking twice about it, and he was considering buying out the number five, not realizing this would cause a disaster. If he changed his mind now, he'd have to buy every single jersey they shipped to the stores. I'm talking millions of dollars, dog. <laughs> Ain't no one trying to pay for all that. Not to mention, the Chiefs kicker and the rest of the team weren't gonna like that. So, Mahomes finally made up his mind and said, that's the thing, I actually like 15 a lot. I got drafted 10th and I wore number five and there's not really any other quarterbacks that have 15. So, five is a special place with me, but we'll see how it goes. And with that, Patrick is still repping the number 15 to this day. You know, not everything can go the way you want it. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. I mean, some players have to pay fines, get injured. Some of them even become criminals. And all of these horrible things have mysteriously happened to every player on the cover of Madden. Yeah, some people are even saying there's a curse. Oh, you wanna hear more about that? Well, click on this video right here. This is about the Madden curse, and it's a pretty scary video, so do be warned. But this video's over, so what are you doing? Click it!